Welcome to section 10.2. These are the notes that are here for the parabola. And we're going to take a look at a pretty familiar um, graph for us. We've been using it ever since probably beginning algebra, but certainly intermediate algebra. And so you've seen this shape before. These are just um, plotted points that are there and you know that it takes this parabolic shape and so that you also know that the parabola is based in y is equal to x squared right that's our basic graph and so everything's going to be a shift from this so the big thing that we're going to want to be able to do is identify the vertex and the shape of a parabola based upon an equation and a parabola is a, a conic section that's gotten by slicing a, a three-dimensional cone and so there's the graph of x squared that you know. You know its domain is the set of all real numbers and that its range is any number greater than or equal to 0 and that the x-intercept and y-intercept is the same 0, 0 in the graph of x squared. So we really care about where that 0, 0 is going to move to. And so as we look at transforming this graph, you've seen these transformations before. We've used them in previous classes. We reinforce them here. You can start to, I guess, realize that transformations is going to be an important part. And not just the transformations, but understanding the core. So if we understand that, that basic parabola shape, then we know with like transformation number one, when we have x minus 4, the quantity squared, that's going to shift us four units to the right. And x plus 4, the quantity squared, like in transformation 2, is going to shift us 4 units to the left. And the reason for that is I got to plug in a negative 4 just to get to that same y height that's 0. We know from our previous experience that we're not adjusting the y height at all. So we're wondering who still gives us 0 because that's the lowest height that is there. And so for transformation one, number 1, it's positive 4, so we're shifting 4 units to the right. Negative 4, shifting 4 units to the left. Left. And then we know if we add, like in transformation number three, something after we do this squaring, that's going to be what's shifting us up and down. And it's going to be a pure shift. It's going to take all of those previous x squared values and move them up. And so the more we can start giving it different language, the better we can we can handle this. In transformation four, four units down. Transformation five is going to flip us over. And transformation six is going to look exactly the same. Now, one of the reasons for that is the x squared function is an even function. It's completely symmetric around the y-axis. So if you flip it around the y-axis, since there's symmetry there already, well, you're going to absolutely look at the exact same thing. Algebraically, you can justify it um, by realizing that negative x squared is the same as x squared. So there's a visual way to deal with it with even and odd functions, but there's also algebraic, and that's always going to be the case. We're also going to throw in the square root function, which is the inverse function, kind of. It, notice that its domain is all the real numbers apologize, all the positive real numbers and zero. So it's all the non-negative numbers. And so it is the inverse of, let me get up here to the x squared va value. It's the inverse of just this right hand side of it. So just to bring up inverse functions again, so there's the graph of it. Its domain is any number greater than or equal to zero and its range is all the y values greater than or equal to zero. And it looks like that is our last page of this. So it's just a basic introduction to this, um, uh, to the parabola.